Today is a feast day for the United States, for the South America, for the Americas, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of the Americas, and we're blessed to celebrate this feast as a solemnity in this chapel dedicated to Our Lady of Guadalupe with the image of Our Lady in the center of our sanctuary and high altar here. And with the blue wall, the sort of blue, blue, bluish green wall that represents the mantle of Our, our Lady. It's on the face of the back wall here in the sanctuary and on the ceiling and, and a little bit on the sides, representing her mantle and her covering those who come into this chapel to honor Our Lady of Guadalupe. And she embraces us. She places her mantle over us in her, her real way. And we see here in this message of Our Lady of Guadalupe, her maternal, especially her uh, spiritual maternity, her being mother of all of us, all of us children of hers in the order of grace. And she shows that to us in the message of Guadalupe, perhaps better than any of the other apparitions in a more, in the most touching way, the way she treated Juan Diego, the way she came to him, the way she spoke to him and with such tender terms and t tender uh, words that she, she called him Juanito, my, my littlest son. She would speak to him so tenderly. And we uh, place our, ourselves in the person of Juan Diego and how she's so concerned about him and yet she has great trust in him. She places her absolute trust in him to carry out this message to, to the Bishop of uh, Mexico to ask him to build a church for her so that she can magnify God, so she can praise him and bring people, bring all of, all of the world to, to God through this church, through those who go, go there. And she says this in, in a beautiful way in the message which I'll read to you. And first she, this is her first words to Juan Diego after she calls him, says, little, listen Juan, my dearest and youngest son, where are you going? And then he tells her that he's going to catechism to be taught by the priests there. And she says, know for sure, my dearest, littlest, and youngest son, that I am the perfect and ever virgin, holy Mary, mother of God, mother of the God of truth, to whom everything lives, the Lord of all things near us, the Lord of heaven and earth, I want very much to have a little house built here for me in which I will show him, I will exalt him and make him manifest. I will give him to the people in all my personal love, in my compassion, in my help, in my protection, because I am truly your merciful mother, yours and all the people who live united in this land, and of all the other people of different ancestries, my lovers who love me, those who seek me, those who trust in me. Here I will hear their weeping, their complaints, and heal all their sorrows, hardships, and sufferings. And to bring about what my compassionate and merciful concern is trying to achieve, you must go to the residence of the Bishop of Mexico and tell him that I sent you to show him how strongly I wish him to build me a temple here on the plain. And we can study the words of Our, our Lady here. They're so packed with meaning and, and uh, understanding of her maternal role over all of us and the way she speaks to Juan Diego. How she will, what she will do when this church is built, that she will, um, she will show him God I will exalt him and make him manifest. I will give him to the people in all my personal love, how she is a mother to us in a personal way, in all my compassion, in my help, and in my protection, because I am truly your merciful mother, yours and all, and all the people who live united in this land. To those who love her, 
to those who seek her and to those who trust in me, she says. And then she will hear our weeping, our complaints, and heal all our sorrows, hardships, and sufferings. And this is what she does when, when we consecrate ourselves to Our Lady. She takes us to her, embraces us, she brings us, draws us close to her, and she heals our sorrows, hardships, and sufferings, and she's a merciful mother to us. And she expresses this again when Juan Diego, after he's gone to the bishop twice, asking him to build a chapel, and he doesn't believe him, and then asks for a sign, and she, he goes back home, uh, and his uncle is sick to, to the point of death, and then he goes back to find a priest to hear his confession and give him the last rites, and he tries to avoid Our Lady going around the hill, and Our Lady intercepts him and says, Listen, put it into your heart, my youngest and dearest son, that the thing that disturbs you, the thing that afflicts you, is nothing. Do not let your countenance, your heart, be disturbed. Do not fear this sickness of your uncle or any other sickness, nor anything that is sharp or hurtful. Am I not here, I, who am your mother? Are you not under my shadow and protection? Am I not the source of your joy? Are you not in the hollow of my mantle and the crossing of my arms? Do you need anything more? Let nothing else worry you, disturb you. Do not let your uncle's illness worry you because he will not die now. You may be certain that he is already well. So we see the tender compassion, the motherly concern of Our Lady to him. And she's saying this to, to the whole world, to all of us, that we should all understand her loving compassion for us in that in all of our sorrows and difficulties and fears that she wants us not to be afraid and not to worry. Do not let your countenance, your heart be disturbed. Do not fear this sickness or any other sickness or anything that is sharp or hurtful. This is to all of us. Am I not here, who I, I who am your mother? Are you not under the shadow and protection, my shadow and protection? Am I not the source of your joy? Are you not in the hollow of my mantle and the crossing of my arms? And this is what, it's what I've imagined in this, in this church, that we are in the crossing of her arms and under the shadow, under the hollow of her mantle and the crossing of her arms. Do you need anything more? So this is what we do in our consecration to her. We do experience her motherly love and care and healing power over us. And if we are not consecrated to her, if we don't trust in her, we don't pray to her, we don't treat her as our mother, we're not going to experience this maternal protection that she wants to show to us. So we underline that truth of Our Lady's motherly concern, her spiritual maternity, which is a doctrine of our, our faith, and we will experience it. We, we need to live it and, and turn to her with that kind of confidence that we have from our, for our real, our real mother. She's our, our real, true mother who does manifest these kinds of motherly concern to us. And we see that, I think, in a special way through, the, through this uh, message of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe.